story. Um, so I played, I was born in Bolivia and I moved here in fourth grade, right? And um, I moved to Santa Cruz and I was all over the place. Like my parents were like trying to find jobs all over, all over California. So I got to move a lot, like bounce around from apartment building to apartment building. Um, my dad always put me into like futsal. He never wanted to put me into club or like organized um, like an organized team. So it was always just little futsal games or like pickup games or like street soccer and, you know, bounced around everywhere mm. until I got a little older. I think I was like 10 when I first started playing in a, in an actual club. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. And, and from there, I just kind of started like getting more serious and played in high school here. The only thing was I just realized as a kid here, um it's obviously a lot more physical and a lot faster than it is technical mm -hmm. and so that was always things that um that always like caught my mind as a kid you know because my dad was very technical with me when he trained me everything was technical you either juggling or you're doing little drills and you're working on both feet and all the important stuff yeah. um and then going into a club it was like uh you know we're doing sprints and we're doing tactical things and and, and nobody was very technical here at least Mm -hmm. um but yeah so then from there you know I got to I got the opportunity right after high school to sign with uh with Red Bull wingers which was like a freestyle team that got to travel all over the country and we got to play against random teams so it was a good opportunity but the only thing was I couldn't play college because you're signing up you know pro contract so yeah. um and with my experience and how high school was going and how I saw college going I was like there's no way I want to play and end up hating the game because of you know, who's the biggest one or who's the fastest one and, mm -hmm. you know, which I never liked. I never enjoyed. Um, so I ended up doing that and I got to travel so much all over the country. And uh, then I got the opportunity to go play in, in Bolivia, which where I was born. And mm -hmm. I played for a Division one team there. I was training there for a few months and I absolutely loved that. And that was amazing. That was a whole reality check for me coming from here, you know, going to a different country and playing. Um and then on one of the summers when I came back, I had a kind of like a realization where I didn't know if I was going to stay here or go back or I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. Um, I was uh, I was confused, you know, so mm -hmm. I got a call from a parent and because uh, I used to work at a local soccer store out here and they said, hey, I heard that, you know, you used to be a player. Or you're currently playing. I would love for you to train my daughter. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, why not? You know, I just, why not? I would love to to try that out. Mm -hmm. And I thought nothing of it at the time. And it was just like one kid a week. Then it went from two kids a week to three kids to having classes during the day. And I, it just slowly progressed. This is all in 2009, by the way. So mm -hmm. it took a long time to grow to what I have now. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a long process. And I never... I never really thought I was going to be doing this. Like that was the last thing I thought of. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, it just, I, I fell in love with it. You know, it became a passion. And I think mm -hmm. it's the most rewarding feeling in the world to help mm -hmm. someone and see them achieve whatever it is they want to achieve, whether it's like making a club team or a high school team or a college team or making it pro, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's something that uh, I can never explain to someone unless they've done it themselves, you know? Yeah. Love that. So what what does your, your company and business uh, specialize in? All technical training. So everything is technical training, which is the reason I did that is because that's one thing I noticed as a kid here is it's like the first thing we skip, you know, it goes yeah. right into like, let's go into playing. Let's figure out how mm -hmm. we can be a tactical team, which I never agreed on. Yeah. So um, yeah, everything is the most detailed ball mastery stuff you can think of. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I've, you know, learn to help kids in that way. And then you can see the difference when they play, obviously. Mm -hmm. So that is my number one thing though. It's all technical training. Love that. So what what age groups do you do you specialize in? So I always started when I started, it was usually like eight to high school kids. And I mm -hmm. thought at eight years old, you at least have the maturity of paying attention. Yeah. You know, and you can you can, you know, listen to what I'm saying. And I did that for years. That was the longest time until this year, honestly, I decided to work with the youngest kids. And I'm talking about like three-year-old kids, four-year-old kids, five-year-old kids. 
<laughs> and I uh, <laughs> blew my mind because, you know, I actually had a a, a talk with um, Tom Byer, who's my mentor. Um, and he's all about, you know, starting kids at home. And when I had that conversation with them, I'm like, man, that is insane how you can develop even more at that age. You just mm-hmm. got to have the patience for it. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I'm working with younger kids and mm-hmm. uh, all the way up to, you know, pro kids. So pro yeah. players. Oh, yeah. nice. I always say to coaches that if you can work with the, the two to three year olds, you can work with any any age group. Absolutely. That is so true. <laughs> yeah that's awesome so so how many how many current clients do you have in your in your program oh man that that always varies um usually a week i'll have 100 to 150 players that come out um and that's classes privates um i'll have like clinics on weekends you know and then sometimes i'll have small sided games that i just host for them when they don't nobody has games so um but usually it's like 100 to 150 that varies throughout the week. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are all players that I've had for years. Or, and then when new players come in, you know, it's either for them or it's not. Usually it is because, you know, it's something they can't do and it's frustrating yeah. for them, especially for the parents. But um, yeah, I end up keeping them. Okay, that's awesome. Do, do you have a, a coaching staff at the moment with you? I did. So before COVID, I had three trainers that I had. Mm-hmm. Uh, younger, actually kids that I trained. And then after high school, you know, they're in college and when, every time they'd come back, they wanted a job. So I, I said, you know, why don't you guys start with the youngers yeah. and you, know, you can do that. And then once COVID hit, I'd all slow down. And then now I'm back to um, looking for new new staff members, anyone who wants to train and, and is passionate about it. And more importantly, someone who can show examples. You know, I think that's mm-hmm. truly the most important part is kids are visual learners. So they want to see what you can do and if they yeah. see it in person they're like it's absolutely possible i want to try it so yeah, so i think that's absolutely. a good thing awesome love that so let me take you back to when you first started your your training business then what what was the number one obstacle you faced at the beginning um, i think the biggest thing was trying to have these kids learn so i teach what i teach is very specific and technical and that's the confidence part Mm -hmm. but then the transition from them going to their team and listening their coach that was the hard part because i would say hey be free you can do whatever you want as Mm -hmm. long as you work your butt off to win the ball back but then other coaches would say otherwise you know like why would you do that don't do that play very simple play one touch and Mm so that that's that was the hardest thing for me to fix or find out how i can fix that um when i first started and then it's it's just frustrating because obviously you can't go against what the coach says because it's their team and but Mm -hmm. you also want to develop these kids and make them as technical as possible as comfortable with the ball as possible you know yeah yeah absolutely a lot of their their talent can go to waste if you're Mm -hmm. on the team so Mm -hmm. that's also where i found out is just that's that's the the decision of the parents and the family if they want to stay on this team they should or they can go find uh somewhere where they can express themselves a lot more Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely so how what do you feel about this then Uh, if there's a kid kids out there that don't do private training uh, would you encourage them to do private training or do you think to get to the next level it's club training is enough I think private training is very, very, very um, handy. It al- obviously it always helps so much, but I mean, I mean, I never really had private training. I never had a trainer. I had my dad, so I was very, very lucky to do that. Um, but not also not everyone has the money for it, and that's always been the the thing for me growing up as well. Is uh, I've always wanted to help. I want to help everybody, you know, but yeah. not everyone can can afford it, and so. Uh, yeah, it's always been that, that, I think that was probably my biggest obstacle I've had, you know, and just trying to sponsor kids and having them come out. Cause if you're talented and you naturally can do this and your, your soccer IQ is very high, then I want to help you as far as possible, as as far as they want to go, you know? Yeah. So, uh, that, that definitely, uh, was, uh, is a big obstacle, but I do think private training is extremely important. And if it's not with a trainer, you should be doing it on your own, you know? I mean, now mm-hmm. have, kids have YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, and you can do so much. And there's apps all over the place. Yeah. Um, 
and and that's stuff that you can do you know on your own so mm -hmm. uh, i think it's very important yeah love that so so where do you see the private training industry going in the next two to five years i mean it's been blowing up in the last five years it's it's crazy how much it's grown um but i see it going in either the digital way because you know I mean, that's what I created, at least we created with a team as an app for, for kids to train all over the world. Cause you can't duplicate yourself. You can't be in multiple places at once as much as you want to. So Correct. I think it's going to go in that app direction where kids are going to, you know, um, download an app, find the drill that you do on Instagram, instead of just like watching it over and over and over again, it'll mm -hmm. break it down step by step and, um, it can help so many kids, you know, and that can go in so many ways, not basketball, boxing, football, mm -hmm. whatever whatever you want mm -hmm. so uh, the my problem with with the with the industry is i think it's blown up which is great and i love helping people become trainers mm -hmm. as long as they do it for the right reasons you know mm -hmm. and the wrong reasons is always like oh you can make a quick buck mm -hmm. and that's that's the worst part i mean that's one and then two is what do you have to offer as a trainer you know what can you provide these kids yeah. What can you do? You know, what is your background or what can you, you know, what can you show them? Mm -hmm. And most of the time it's, I mean, well, I mean, I played in high school or I played a little bit of college or whatever it is. Um, but I think also attitude and character as a trainer, as a coach goes such a long way, you know, because you're not mm -hmm. just these kids like soccer and, and, and how to become a more technical or better player. You're also teaching them like life skills and, just how to become a better person. So mm -hmm. I think all those things are, are very important into becoming the next, if you want to become a trainer, uh, yeah. as long as you do it for the right reasons, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So so talk to us about uh, how did you get your first ever client then? So it was uh, um, through that phone call, you know, I was at a soccer store that I used to work at and, and he just recommended me because I just moved back and, yeah. And then that first player stuck with me for so long. Um, mm -hmm. And they actually stopped playing after college. But every time I see them, they're, they're you know, they're always so thankful. And, they, you know, they, it's, they said the same thing, you know, like you showed me so much more than just being, you know, a technical player. You know, just a lot mm -hmm. of life skills and comfortable with myself, confidence. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was, that was crazy. And I remember training that, um, this girl, and, and I was thinking, like, the first week okay that was a little hard i mean we didn't get far but then the next week and then the next week you just see this like small brick by brick you know going up mm -hmm. and it, and like i said it's you know once once she started getting better at her team you know more kids started gravitating towards me and yeah you know where where are you doing this you know so mm -hmm. that that was cool that was cool how that naturally and i never the cool thing was as well is i never uh I never advertised at the time. I didn't have Instagram. So it kind of, it was just word, you know. Word of mouth. Yeah, word of mouth. And it just blew mm -hmm. up. And, and then then I was like, okay, well, I guess creating an Instagram would be the next thing. <laughs> then, wow, now that industry is like massive, you know. Yeah. It's so mm -hmm. interesting to see how much it's grown. But yeah, uh, yeah I think I think it's a, I think it's a, it's an industry where we can all help each other, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. always help each other like i have another uh coach trainer who's actually moving into town and our, our city is not that big um mm -hmm. and he called me and asked me like hey i don't want to step on your boundary or you know none of that and i i mean uh, to me the way i look at it is i offer technical training and if you want to offer technical training that's oh, that's even better because now mm -hmm. we can off each other mm -hmm. but he's more of a tactical trainer and yeah. i think that's amazing like why not you know, the whole point is we're trying to help people and right. we're trying to help these kids, this next generation get better. So um, mm -hmm. there's no problem with more people coming in as long as, like I said, for the right reasons. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how important is it to network in this industry? Extremely. I think it's extremely important. Um, mostly because, uh, you know, you, you want to the soccer world is very small as it is, you know, it's extremely small. And, and once you played at a high level, you know, everybody. So, um, the more you put yourself out there, uh, the better your social goes, the better, you know, your clientele goes, which I don't like calling it clientele. Cause I never did. I just thought I always, think of, uh, 
and I'm working in an office or something. So I always call them like, weird. <laughs> but um, mm. um, yeah, I know. I think it's it's extremely important, especially nowadays with the industry that we have with with social media. Um, the more you network, the more people you bring in, and that's how you can connect with uh, you know, wanting to open up a warehouse or an investor or whatever it is that you want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's the best way to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Agree. Agree. So talk talk to us a bit about your current sales and marketing process. So how do you sell and how do you market your business currently? So right now, the way I market it is, like I said, I have my website, which I recently, for the last couple of months, I've been working on this. Um, I just turned it into a nonprofit. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're probably the first person I've told other than my family. And <laughs> I've just turned it into um, a nonprofit. So the way I used to do it was always through classes. So I had a beginner, intermediate, advanced class. Um, and then privates. Privates are always like either five o'clock in the morning before school, six, seven, mm-hmm. late afternoon after classes. Um, so, and everything was through social media. So I have my website, send out the email um, with the schedule. Anyone who wanted mm-hmm. to book would check in, go check in through the website. And then, you know, that would be my daily schedule, Monday through Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, now that I have the nonprofit and I want to blow that up, I, I want to, obviously the point of that was to reach out to more, to more players, players who can't afford it. There's mm-hmm. really serious that want more private training that I can help with throughout the day. And, and, and not only that, now I can guide these kids into um, just a direct path to either college or pro, you know, mm-hmm. I think that's mm-hmm. something we lack too. It's always like a mystery. Like, how do you play pro? You go to mm-hmm. college, you get drafted, and that's the only way that they know of, you know? So, and there's so many ways. Um, but that's basically how I market myself also through social media. Social media is like my goal, my bread and butter. You know, anything I post from there, that's where all my players and parents come from. Mm-hmm. I really like that. So you brought me on to the next question because this is something we get asked from a lot of coaches is about a lot of them ask us, should I set up a nonprofit? So the question to you is, should a coach set up a nonprofit and why should they or why should they not? I think it's, I think you should, as long as you have the uh, the clientele, right? If you have the clientele, then it's great because then you're always going to have, you're always going to be busy. But I think if you're starting off, I think you'd start off small and you know helping as many people as you can but i think it's a great idea because uh, again i've helped this community for years and now i can finally help that low income part of this community um which i think personally is where the better players come from you know Mm -hmm. ones that are just that can't afford playing at a really big club and just play sunday leagues you know in the valley or Mm -hmm. wherever it is to play where they just play for fun down the street which is amazing so I want to reach to those kids and and help those kids more. And then also the ones that are privileged, those are the ones that can help like in privates or in classes and they can come daily instead of just like twice a week or once a week, mm-hmm. you know, and then just explode it from there and and uh, and grow this as much as I can. But I think a nonprofit was, I mean, honestly, before I, before I decided to do it, I thought about it for months, almost a year, and I couldn't sleep because I'm like, should I do it? Should I not do it? What are the perks? What are not, what, you know, and one of the biggest thing was like, how am I going to get paid? Obviously that's what everybody always asks, you know? Um, But I've been successful with this for, for years. Thank God that to the point where I forgot about, it's not about the money. It's more about the, the, the passion that I have for it. And when I do help someone and I see them succeed and I see them sign with a pro team or college, I think that is the most rewarding thing in the entire world. And I can't replicate that. Mm-hmm. So I was like, if I do this for free and I help more people, I mean, it's more power to me, you know, it just makes my day better. Yeah. So I, I say, I say, yes, a hundred percent. I would absolutely do it as long as you have that. Um, you already have a set business and you've done this for a good amount of time. I mean, mm-hmm. you're where you are. Um, if you have the connection somewhere in the city, and, and you have you can do that then all to you you know i think that's great mm-hmm. i'd love say not is the way to go yeah love that so alfredo where, where do you see your business in the next five years from now 
Uh, I see uh, my facility with my court, with my with my uh, turf field, with my office upstairs, um, league bar inside. Um, some of where kids and parents all hang out, and it's more of a it's more of a instead of you dropping off your kid and watching the entire time, you can enjoy it and have fun, and your kids playing, or there's an adult league. Mm -hmm. um, very competitive, something very competitive, and and just different that I've never seen before, you know? Mm -hmm. um, other than, you know, there is actually a place. The reason I got this, that idea exactly, is there's a place in downtown LA that I play in, and it's a futsal league, and it's owned by uh, the shoe surgeon. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's, yeah. 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 So he he, uh, he he created that, but it's for basketball and soccer. He does everything. And mm -hmm. I think when you're there, it's the coolest thing. It's like it's like you're going into a, a club, you know? You walk in, you have your bar, cool seating, ping pong, pool table. <laughs> yeah, he likes to design his shoes. And then he has his futsal court upstairs, lounge to watch the field or the court. Sports and then, paradise. Yeah. And, and, you know, you just want to be there all day because all yeah. you're doing is you're watching, hanging out, you're, you know, you're with the kids, the kids are running around. I think it'll be, that's my goal, you know, in the next five years to have that and to give jobs to, to more people so that, you know, more of a soccer community. I mean, we're growing, we're a growing soccer community, but I want more, I want mm -hmm. more trainers and I want uh, a lot. Yeah. I want to, like I said, I want to start working with more younger kids that mm -hmm. way I can hand them off at seven years old to clubs and they're like, Thank you. you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's exactly what we need. A technical player, now I can do whatever I want with this player. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Instead of at seven, eight, you're at you're at a club and you have no ball control at all. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Cool. So last uh, last question for you. It's a two-part question and it's it's more of a personal one. So the first one is what does failure mean to you? And then the second bit is how important is taking risks in business? Oh, man, failure is, uh, it means, I think it's a life-changing thing for sure. You know, I've, I've, I've had failure a lot in my life, especially in the last year, which I made a video about. Um, and it's just uh, not, not knowing where you are at the moment. You know, you're in a dark place. You don't know what um what you're going to do next uh what what's what's what you're going to do in the next five years you know so i think failure is extremely important if you want to be someone or if you want to grow as a person mm -hmm. and uh it's the only way to go up you know because once you hit rock bottom there's only one way up and i think it's extremely important um it sucks obviously it's painful you know but you only learn from it yeah. um and then second, what was, I'm sorry, what was the second question? So the second one is how important is taking risks in business? Extremely important. As long as they're smart, you know, like you got to <laughs> think, about these things. you can't just, uh, cause I see, I, I read, I read a lot and I have a lot of podcasts that I've, that I've always listened to. And it's just, uh, it's not just about taking a risk and being like, oh, screw it. I'm going to put a hundred thousand dollars in this with not even thinking about it. You know, you have to do your research Mm -hmm. take that risk and if it's very scary and you've done your research i say 100 percent, you do it you have to do it you know because mm -hmm. you're only young once and you're only gonna do this one time in this life so might as well just fail yeah create another one you know mm -hmm. but uh always always do your research <laughs> <Always>. <laughs> you know it does, a lot of it does don't. you know a lot of people don't they always just think you know i'm gonna just wing it whatever you know, which I'm a big, I'm that person. I am that person. I'm the person mm -hmm. that's like, I'll figure it out. But I've messed up so many times doing that, that uh, now I'm like, you know, I, I researched this whole nonprofit thing. I've, I've asked a ton of people who have nonprofits. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then I'm like, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm going all in. And mm -hmm. um, so far, I mean, it's literally day two. So <laughs> I'm, I'm figuring this out as we go. <laughs> yeah i think it's, it's it's about being a little bit patient with a, with your decisions right sometimes yeah. we want everything so quickly yeah absolutely absolutely and i'm that person ex exactly like i'm a very impatient person and i want the second i come up with an idea i can't sleep mm -hmm. and then i research and then i look up all these videos and i listen and i read and then i want it by tomorrow and it's obviously unrealistic but 
I think it's uh I think it's better to be that way than just sit on things and let them just fly past your head, you know. Correct. So I think it's much better to do that than you know to let it go. Perfect, love that. Perfect, Alfredo. Well, if I want to thank you for for jumping on and uh, sharing us sharing with us your journey, your story. I know it's going to inspire a lot of coaches uh, that watch this. Now, if any coach wants to reach out to you or follow your business, follow your journey, what is the best way to do that? Um, the social, the social, my social media, which is like Insane's Training mm -hmm. um, on Instagram. And then my regular one is, you know, Fredo Sains, which is my, my everyday life stuff. There's a lot of soccer stuff there, but it's just, I think uh, um, that's just more of what I do on a daily basis. But um, yeah, that's the best way to reach out. Or my website is insanes.com. Okay, perfect. So what we'll do is we'll we'll add that to to the bottom of the video, so anyone watching oh. can uh, can reach out to you. So want to uh, want to wish you the best for for your Thank business, you. uh, for your nonprofit. Congratulations as well for 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 taking that that leap as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. And, um, well, look, looking to connect again in the near future. Yeah, I'd love that. I'd love that. I appreciate it so much. All right. Well, take care, Alfredo, and we'll speak soon. All right.